We got a no cool call. There's oh, she's got a big 22kW Generac. Uh, I've heard Generacs are not good like they used to be. If anybody knows any truth to that, let me know. But I heard Generac is not the way to go anymore. Anyway, her AC's not coming. Oh, the outdoor unit's not coming on. And look, Ted, it's a train. It does have a black compressor in it, but it's Alliance. Um, let's see. I think I heard something click in there. All right, let me go get some tools. Oh, and it's got lock caps. Let me see which ones. Is it the Schrader core type? I'm trying to tilt my camera. Yeah, I think those are the Schrader core type. You, yeah, it takes a Schrader core tool. Okay, well, let me, let me get in here and see if the contactor's pulled in or whatever. Well, let's see what kind of unit we're working with first. I know it's a train, but let's see, probably a five ton. No? It's a four TTR, it's a 16 sear, four ton, and it's from 2020. Okay, let's see what we got. All right guys, so our contactor is pulled in. Let's see if we're getting power. Set the meter right there where y'all can see it. Well, it might help if I put the disconnect in. Okay, the disconnect is in. No power. Nothing to ground, nothing to ground. Okay, let me go check the breaker panel. Oh, wait a minute. Load shed. This thing might have us locked out. This thing might have us locked out, but I'm gonna go, the unit wasn't running even before that, which makes me think we got a trip breaker. Seven and nine was not tripped. Wait, that might be the air handler. That's a 60 amp. If they had a 60 amp on the outdoor unit, that's not good. Surge protector. I don't see it. Oops. None of these doubles are tripped. All the doubles are fine. Okay. Okay, guys. So they have the whip broken through this generator box. But if, ooh, that wire nut is extremely loose. Okay, it just went solid. Man, that wire nut is loose. I'm glad I caught that. That one wasn't as bad, but this one was bad. Okay, now they're tight. But if you look here, I have line voltage coming from the breaker and I have load voltage, which is allowing power to flow to the whip. So I should have power here. And okay, now I do, cause, cause the box is solid, but not at the top. We have a bad contactor on a brand new train unit. I cannot believe this. I mean, this unit is, I don't even know if it's a, well, yeah, it's about two years old, I think, and the contactor's already out. 
Now, I don't see no signs of ants or anything. All right, we're gonna change out a contactor. All right, guys, I went and got me a bucket to sit on. And the way these train units are made, they have that hump on top and my phone is leaning, so I hope y'all don't fall off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull, yeah, the disconnects out. And I already checked it, but let me double check my power. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, so we're not gonna get shocked. Pull all these off. Whew, that one is on there, buddy. There we go. That's gonna be a condenser fan motor. This will be our common that jumps to the capacitor. Okay, tuck that away. Nothing on the bottom except the line voltage. There's no crankcase heater or anything. This is our common. Yep, I knew that was gonna happen to y'all eventually. I yanked too hard on that one. Make sure you can still see. That's the common for the low voltage. That's the hot, which runs through the pressure switches. And you can use a 516 nut driver on these uh, contactors with the filaments. For those of y'all that didn't know that. And we're gonna take them all the way out because I'm not just gonna strip the bare wire. I'll show y'all what I, how I do it because my new contactor has lugs. Now, this is Ted's beloved train equipment, but it has a very, very Chinese capacitor and that's probably why it's dead. The capa uh, uh, contactor, I'm sorry, it has a Chinese capacitor as well. What's up with that, Ted? Even Ream is putting, at least they're putting, uh, not Mexico. I, well, I, yeah, I think the Mexi they are Mexican now, Mex Mexico capacitors. But I think they used to use ones from, uh, oh crap, I can't remember. India, maybe? I could be wrong. All right, so I have all the, uh, all the lugs off. I put the screws back in. That way it doesn't fall apart. Because if you don't put these screws back in, this contactor, will, I'll, it'll just fall apart. I'm curious to see what that contactor looks like on the inside. But the first thing I'm gonna do is get the new one mounted and uh, hook the low voltage up so I don't burn a fuse or anything on the inside. Oh, see that, that one just touched, but it didn't arc, so we'll be, I'm gonna keep my hand on it. Oh yeah, she's hot. Let me see. Curious to get this thing open.
Wow. Doesn't look that bad. But it's definitely not working. So see, ours has lugs. So most of you would take these and cut them off and strip the bare wire, but that's not what I'm gonna do. Okay, first thing I wanna do is get the new one on and get the low voltage hooked up. Let me go ahead and get this one on there. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put them both on there. Okay, she should pull in. And it didn't. Oh, I know why. He's got a Nest thermostat, that's why. <coughs> when you undo the low voltage, even on the condensing unit, the Nest thermostat goes into a time delay. Stupidest thing I've ever heard of, but it does it. Wait, no, she did. That was the last customer that had a nest. She's got a honey whale. <coughs> this nut driver is not wanting to fit. I don't know if it's because of the way the contactor's made and the head is too fat. Let me see if my drill will get on there. All right, guys, I finally got that 20, or that screw thing. I, I just, I couldn't get the head of my nut driver on there, but I got, I got it done with the drill. So I'm hooking up these wires back up. Okay, now let's talk about the bottom two and the top two. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to use our strippers and uh, we're gonna cut the circle off and leave this for that lug to grab to. Much better connection than just the bare wire. And we're gonna do the same thing up top. There's contactor just pulled in off the, for whatever reason, it lost its 24 volt. And again, to all you super techs out there, you don't have to be like, oh yeah, John, we've been doing it like that for years with those lugs. I've been doing it like this for years too. This is for the guys that don't know, okay? So all you super techs, you don't have to hop in here with, oh, I've been cutting, a, cutting them like that and doing them like that for years. And hey, that's great. This is for the guys that, watch this stuff to to learn it just makes a much much better connection for you veteran techs that know that already just ignore me ignore what i'm saying now you want to be careful with these contactors they they will break the plastic wheel especially a single pole especially on this side on the single pole side. When you go to tighten this down, you wanna put your finger right here if y'all can see that. And you you don't wanna go crazy with it. Put that finger right there so you don't break that plastic and just get a good snug on it. That's it, that's all you need. Same thing with these two up top.
Okay. Put my thumb right there. And that's it. Make sure I got everything. Yeah, see how nice and neat that looks? Those are tight. All this is tight. Everything's tight. Okay. All we got to do now is put our disconnect in and then wait out our generator load shed. Disconnect is in. And, yep, we have a delay. All right, we'll get back to y'all when she fires up. Okay, we're still waiting on our generator box to release power. So I went ahead and threw the quick gauge on there well, just to make sure everything's okay. Probably gonna go ahead and put the cover back on because I'm pretty confident that our repair is good. So we'll put the cover back on and uh, wait for that damn thing to release. I'm gonna check these wire nuts too because, well, that's not the HVAC guy that, that did the, the one in the electrical box. Yeah, these are good and tight. Chinese capacitor from train too. So I'm still waiting. I'm not going to sit here and make y'all wait for the load shed or whatever the hell it's called. What do they call it? One flat? Yeah, load shed. Okay. You can see it's running. Got about 125 right at maybe a 126, 27 pounds of suction. I'll let it run a few more minutes and if it stays in that area, I mean, I have no reason to suspect that this thing's low on gas, but just wanted to make sure, but I think we're gonna be fine. All right, guys, the train is back up and running. And I was just giving Ted a hard time. He knows that we're friends. Matter of fact, I think I've seen a video of Ted's where he had a two-year-old or three, about a one and a half, two-year-old train, and that contactor went out on him as well. So here it is. The old Homer contactor, made in China. That's the same contactor that ICP and Carrier use. Ream does not use this contactor. I don't know where their contactor comes from. I sold a change out today, so I'll look and see on the, on the next change out. But it's not a Homer. But I do know that Bryant, Carrier, and all the ICP brands use this exact contactor, this Homer, made in China. This is pulling good heat. Pressure, I already took the gauge off and put that stupid lock cap back on. Uh, but the pressures are good. She's good to go. It's a nice machine. It's nice and quiet. I mean, look, I've, I've made a lot of stuff about train guys, but I like train. I mean, it, there's no doubt that it's a good unit. I just, mainly that was me and Ted years ago giving each other a hard time. But I, I tell you what, I would sell this product before I would sell a lot of other products. So, nothing wrong with train. I just don't think it's worth the price, at least here. Now, some people like Ted, they're in a direct state. They don't pay as much as we do. I have a distributor. It's, it's extremely expensive, and I just don't think it's worth it. But other than that, yeah, I mean, it's a good unit. All right, guys, well, it's back up and running. I'm going to go talk to the customer. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you all on the next one.